don't be unimpressed. Please 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 don't be unimpressed. Please. Now, one quick note before I begin. CBS has been very aggressive about copyright claims for this Star Trek Discovery, so I'm just gonna play it safe and just show stills from the trailer. I hope you don't mind, and I do recommend that you watch the trailer before watching this, just so I get a more accurate picture of what you're talking about. I have high hopes for Star Trek Discovery. I've been a Star Trek fan for many, many years, ever since my parents bought me a VHS set of the first six movies. Star Trek is very close to my heart, and there hasn't been any good Star Trek since the 1990s. The, the movies have been on an even keel downhill since Star Trek First Contact, and the TV shows haven't been good since Voyager ended. Enterprise was, well, let's say disappointing. You can imagine that because of this, I've been reading every single article, announcement, and set photo with anticipation. I was so excited when it was announced that Nicholas Meyer and Brian Fuller would be working on it. I was scared when Brian Fuller left. I reserved judgment when I saw the casting announcements, and I reserved anticipation until the trailer. Now, I don't have that luxury. I should be excited. I really should be. But after watching the trailer, I'm just not. As a Star Trek fan, I should be excited for the next iteration of the franchise. Guess there's just a little bit too much J.J. Abrams in this particular project, even though he's not attached to it whatsoever. I'm not sure what the plot of this particular project involves besides deep space exploration, Klingons, warp signatures, proton torpedoes, and all those other Star Trek shenanigans. The main character is number one, played by Sonequa Martin-Green of The Walking Dead. It's interesting to have the perspective of her first officer, named after what I can only guess is a reference to Captain Picard's appellation for his second-in-command, Commander Riker. The only thing that confuses me is who the captain will be. Because previously, it was said that Jason Isaacs of Harry Potter fame would be the captain, but now it seems that Michelle Yeoh from Sunshine is the captain. Both are great actors, so I'm not complaining one way or the other. I can't say for certain, but I do have a feeling that I won't terribly like the story from this season. First and foremost, the Klingons have never really struck me as a terribly interesting race or antagonist. During the time when the Klingons were fighting humans, the only... They were only characterized as evil villains and warriors, I guess. It was only when they became allies of the Federation that they were made interesting. And that was only because of characters like Worf, whose personality exemplified the culture clash between the two empires. And that culture clash was the interesting part. Remove the element of these two different cultures and peoples having to work together, and we're just back to mean guys who like to fight, I guess. It's a shame, too, because there are so many fascinating Star Trek antagonists. My personal favorites are the scheming, repressive Romulan Empire, the opportunistic, self-serving Cardassian Union, the terrorist Maquis, and, of course, the Borg. I love the Borg because they combine the existential horror of being trapped inside your own body and being forced to act out the will of others with the body horror of being transformed into this monstro monstrosity of metal and blood and flesh. But that's way too interesting. Nope. We need guys with metal bird cages outside their outfits shouting to the ceiling. Rawr! <laughs> now this is part of a larger issue that I see with this new series, which is an extreme fondness for the past. I mean, allow me to explain. The main character of the show is named after Commander Riker from The Next Generation, the main villain is the same as it was 50 years ago, and two separate characters from that 50-year-old show, Sarek, Spock's dad, and Harry Mudd, some annoying idiot, will be returning. I think this will go over as well as references to A New Hope did in Rogue One. That is, a sledgehammer to the face reminding us that we are indeed watching the thing that we are watching. Despite... All of that, all of that, that's a side issue. The main complaint that I have with this show is the tone. Everything from the darker uniforms to the lighting to the set design to the trailer music seems a little bit more dramatic and grim than Star Trek used to be. The old shows had a much lighter, more hopeful tone. I like to characterize it like this. Star Trek is an optimist's version of the future. It is about striving for perfection. 
And this new show, and by extension the J.J. Abrams films, feel a little bit more grim. Like a pessimist version of the future, or at, le at the very least, a realist's version of the future. It's not about striving for perfection so much as struggling for survival. And that's an important distinction. And I'm not asking that Star Trek stay clear to my vision of Star Trek. By no means should it stick to what I think Star Trek should be. It should try new things and it should evolve. But the one thing that I believe it should prefer preserve is the tone. Star Trek should be about a bright, bold new future. It shouldn't be about darkness. Who am I kidding? I'm going to watch it anyway. I'm just nervous and disappointed. Well, I guess I'll see you next time. Goodbye, I am David.